Well, good evening everyone. I hope you're having a good day. DK here with Mr. V Amps, and this is what I would call a non-confidence project. I've actually got a lot of non-confidence products uh, projects going on right now. That's why you haven't been seeing quite as many videos regularly. Um, and what I refer to as a non-confidence project is something that might be outside of my wheelhouse. Um, in my family, you kind of just, you know, it was already broke, so we're going to take it apart and we're going to figure out how it works. So I do have a number of things that, you know, I'm learning how to fix as I'm working on it, and that doesn't really make for a good video. Um, this was given to me by a friend of mine who was hoping it worked, and of course it does not. It's a TI-85 calculator, um, and it's got our classic, um, those are um, carbon zinc batteries. So if we've got four of those, that would be three six volts I should get. Let's see if there's any juice on those batteries. Let's first start, because if it doesn't turn on, it could be because it doesn't have any power. We'll put our meter on 20 volts DC and whack the camera and we'll start. So we should be measuring from, see the final end point looks like it's here and the final negative point would be here. And I got, there's 6 volts. Okay, so our batteries are working allegedly but it doesn't turn on okay well it could be the on button I suppose I have no idea what's wrong with this but that's okay I figured maybe we need an adventure like this where I have no idea what I'm doing Okay. Boy, they were very thorough on their how to put batteries in something drawing, weren't they? I would have expected you're, you're supposed to be using alkalines rather than, uh, you know, carbon zincs, but... Okay, well, let's get a precision screwdriver. Well, you know what, before... Granted, I got six volts out of that, but just because those are carbon zincs, they might be puking out under the load, so let's take some new alkalines. Let's try that. And this might be just a total bust. And if it is, that's okay. There's always something else to try. And no, it gives us the finger. Okay. So we know that's not it. I'll take these out. We'll get a screwdriver and bust into this thing. Okay, so here's another case of I didn't know what to do so I just tried what I like to do to these kind of things. I don't know if you can read that. It says memory cleared default set and I can push buttons and well I can't really push buttons because I don't have the membrane on there but I can kind of short them with a screwdriver and it's working. Um, I did really didn't know what to do. I've got a little bench power supply here supplying uh, the 6 volts for me because there's no place to put the batteries. But um, the screen kind of worked once, so I figured it was probably that, and I'd be more likely to melt and do horrible things if I worked up here. So I just saw the surface mount gubbins. I checked that tantalum capacitor to see if it was shorted, and it was not. Um, so I just got my heat gun and I warmed up all of these surface mount components around here in the power area and these chips and things. Uh, much like we did with the Fender G-Deck amp, you know, what in the world am I going to do with this? Well, you know, you can actually see the result of the heat. It kind of <laughs> did a little number on that uh, plastic, but, uh, you know, it was going to go to the trash otherwise. And, um, heating it up, apparently there was probably a hairline crack in one of these solder joints. Now. It would make more... Oh great, it turned off. Was that because I bumped something and turned it off, or because I actually did something to it that would turn it off? Let's see if we can turn it back on again. 
Yeah, and you can turn it back on. So yeah, I probably just knocked my power off. But um, we're going to put it back together and see if it works. But it's one of those with these surface mount things. You know, if you don't have the microscope and all that other kind of stuff, sometimes just heating up the board with a paint gun. Obviously, you want to be careful to not have to melt the plastic and all that and take as much out of the way as you can to avoid the heat. But it looks like reflowing the board the cheap poor man's way has gotten this calculator back to life. So let's put it back together and see if it actually works. I know the camera angles suck. My bench is covered with clock parts, so we're working on this little chair here for today. Okay. I don't know, maybe that LED light's probably too too intense, I don't know. Hard to see on the viewfinder. I had to put um, alkaline batteries in this to be able to see the screen well. The carbon zinc batteries I don't think had enough current here. They you know, they just they suck. They were probably weak. Anyway, um yeah, I can put some math problems in here and it works. So um yeah. So, this is another one of those things where if you don't know what to do with it and it's all surface mount, I suppose heating it up might save your neck sometimes. This doesn't really constitute as much of an electronics repair and I don't know that everybody learned anything, but I learned that the heat gun is my friend and otherwise this thing would be in the trash. So, with things that would otherwise be in the trash, this is the kind of thing that, you know, I do. And, um, yeah. Hooray. So, it works again. TI-85, like I had in high school. Actually, I think I had an HP-48G, but, no, you get the idea. Thanks for watching.